In the previous video, we talked about how pressure affects the solubility of the gas. In this video, we are talking about Henry's law. So Henry or William Henry studied the solubility of a gas in a liquid and he gave the quantitative relation between two things. First, he gave a quantitative relationship between the pressure and the solubility. So he gave us a relation between the solubility of the gas and the pressure. Now, according to this law, at a constant temperature, the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above the surface of the liquid or solution. So think about this. Um, in our previous example where we had this piston, so we had gas molecules. Now, the solubility of this gas at constant temperature, remember that's very important. So, at a constant temperature, the, part, the solubility is directly proportional of the gas in a liquid, is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above the surface. So the solubility of the gas in this liquid would be directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above it. Right. So this can also be said as partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the gas in the solution. This is because we are considering mole fraction as the measure of solubility. So from that we get mole fraction um, is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above it. And this was actually initially uh, concluded independently by Dalton. He said that the solubility is a function of partial pressure of the gas. And then we're considering the mole fraction as a measure of the solubility of the gas. So we get mole fraction of the gas in the liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above the liquid. And this is again going to be at the constant temperature. So from here, we get mole fraction is denoted by X directly proportional to P, which is the partial pressure. And we get P is equal to KHX, where KH is the Henry's, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to write that again, Henry's law constant. Okay, so how did we get from here to here? So first of all, we know that at a constant temperature, the solubility of a, of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas which is present above it. From there, we so we got this, right? And it was Dalton who also independently said that the solubility is a function of partial pressure of the gas. And we are considering mole fraction to be a, a what do you sorry mole fraction is a measure of the solubility, and so we get the relation that mole fraction is directly proportional. Sorry, sorry, mole fraction of the gas in the liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas above it, and this is again at the constant temperature. Now mole fraction is considered x. P is the partial pressure and to remove the proportionality, I mean proportional and get an equal to symbol, we add a proportionality constant which is KH, which is the Henry's law constant. So when we plot a graph between the partial pressure of HCl and mole fraction of HCl in its solution in cyclohexane, we get this straight line. And this straight line denotes the Henry's law constant. Okay, so when we plot a graph between the partial pressure of a gas, in this case HCl and uh, mole fraction of HCl in the solution in cyclohexane, we get a straight line passing through the origin. And the slope of this particular line is going to be equal to the Henry's law constant or KH. Okay, now 
when you think about the if you notice i've constantly been telling you that the temperature is going to be constant so here we have a a table which is given in your textbook and what we're going to do is we're going to notice certain things in this table okay and we're going to be writing the observations on the top now first thing that you see here you have a different gas helium hydrogen nitrogen oxygen okay four different gases so helium hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen now notice the kh values of these for helium, it's 144.97. For hydrogen, it's 69.16. For nitrogen, it's at 76.48. And for oxygen, it's 34.86. And notice the temperature is going to be the same for all of them. It's 293 Kelvin. And each of these have a different KH value, which means that KH, different gases, have different kh values that's the first thing we notice now the second one so this obviously sorry this obviously implies that the value of kh depends upon the nature of the gas now the second one that you notice is that let's look at nitrogen and oxygen Okay, now nitrogen at 293, the KH value is 76.48. Nitrogen at 303 Kelvin, the KH value is 88.84. Which means when there, again, we can do the same with oxygen, where for uh, 293 Kelvin, it's 34.86. Whereas at 303 Kelvin, it's uh, 46.82 and I would like to remind you that all of these values are dependent on uh, like the liquid that we're using over here is water. So when there is an increase in temperature there is an increase in the value of KH. So 293, 303 same gas. It's 76 and 88. 293 and 303, 34 and 46. So this means when temperature increases KH increases and this we're talking with respect to the same gas we're not relating two different gases we're talking with the same gas the, then there is an increase in temperature there is an increase in the value of KH now why do we care about all of this now let's come back to this equation okay now when you have now we know that the mole fraction is the denote or it denotes or it's a measure of solubility. So let's write this equation in terms of mole fraction. Mole fraction equals to 1 by kh. We are pushing this here into P. Now when the value, when this whole thing is high, the solubility is high. That's all we know. Okay. So when this is going, this let's assume this is like 100 then obviously the mole fraction is high which means oh, actually mole fraction cannot be that high sorry but mole fraction maximum value cannot be more than one anyways so when you have this value that's what you learned in class 11 x1 plus x2 mole fraction um of a particular component a plus component b is equal to one so it can't be higher than one so if the value of this equals to 1, then the solubility is at its maximum. Now, when, when you increase the value of KH, what do you think will happen to the solubility? When we increase the value of KH, there is a decrease in the entire mole fraction value, which means when KH increases, the solubility decreases. And this is going to be at a particular pressure. So let's say, for example, uh, you have a value of KH. Again, very hypothetical. So you have, we are assuming that pressure is constant in both cases. So let's assume X A M and the value of KH is 2 um, into P. Okay, so the value is uh, 
xa will be equal to um, do math 0 0.5 p okay again let's take another case where we're going to take another easy question a um, value so xb oh, sorry xa at the same pressure but let's assume the temp due to change in temperature there is a change in value of kh and it is 1 by 4 um into p this means that oh, sorry <laughs> The point um, zero four two zero. Okay, so it becomes zero point two p. So zero point five is obviously higher than zero point two, which means that if the value of k h is high, then the solubility will be low because the mole fraction value is going to be low. This is my math. So I'm going to write that over here at constant pressure. Okay. okay, value when kh is high, solubility or kh increases, solubility decreases. Now, the next one. Now, we know how KH relates to the solubility, right? Now, which in turn means that we can also get a relation between temperature and solubility. Okay, so when there is an increase in the sol increase in the temperature, the value of KH is also increasing, right? So, let's take when KH is increasing, sorry, when increase, <laughs> sorry. When temperature increases, this implies that KH will also increase and this again implies solubility will decrease. On the other hand, if the temperature decreases, KH will decrease and this in turn will mean that solubility increases. So, when temperature is increasing, KH value is increasing. That's what we saw over here. And when KH value increases, the solubility obviously decreases. On the other hand, when the temperature gets decreased, the KH value will also decrease. And this in turn means that solubility will increase. And that is exactly why our aquatic life loves cold seasons. That's because the oxygen in the air will get dissolved to a greater extent in the water. And this in turn means that well, more oxygen for them to have fun in. And that's why our aquatic life loves it when the water is cold because solubility of oxygen increases when there is a decrease in temperature. So I'm going to go over whatever we learned throughout the entire video again. First of all, we said that Henry's law was given by William Henry, where he provided us with a quantitative relationship between pressure and the solubility of a gas. He said at a constant temperature, solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above the surface of the liquid or solution. And from there, we got the relation that solubility is directly proportional to the partial pressure. Dalton was also another person who was independently working on all of this stuff. And he, he said that the solubility is a function of partial pressure of the gas. He didn't say that how related they were, but he said that solubility is a function of the partial pressure of the gas. And we assume that the mole fraction is like a measure of the solubility. And from that, we got that the mole at a constant temperature, mole fraction of the gas in the liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above it. So mole fraction is denoted as X and partial pressure as P. So to remove the proportionality symbol, we get a constant that is the Henry's law constant, which is KH. When we plot a graph between the partial pressure and the mole fraction, we get a straight line passing the origin. And this, the slope of this particular line is equal to the Henry's law constant.
Then we checked out the table that is given in your textbook where it shows the various gases and its solubility in water at various temperatures. The first thing we observed was the fact that each gas has its own KH value at a particular temperature. And that's why helium, hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen, 293 Kelvin, had different values, which meant that uh, the value of KH depends upon the nature of the gas. The second thing that we noticed was that at for a particular gas at different temperatures, the value of KH is different. That is, when the temperature increases, the value of KH also increases. The third thing that we noticed was that at a constant pressure over here, that uh, at a constant pressure, when the KH value is high, then the value of mole fraction will all, will be low and this in turn means that the solubility decreases on the other hand when there is uh, an increase when the value of kh is low the solubility of that particular gas is going to be high the last thing that we saw was that when the temperature increases, the KH value also increases. This implies that the solubility decreases. On the other hand, when temperature decreases, the solubility, sorry, the KH value is less and the solubility increases. And that is why the aquatic life really loves winter because the temperature is so cold that the solubility of oxygen in the water will increase. And this in turn will, will mean more oxygen for the aquatic life. With that, we're done with Henry's law. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to quickly discuss the effect of temperature. Basically, it decreases with increase in temperature. I think at this point, it's quite obvious um, what happens, right? So um, what happens is the gas molecules are, um, you know, pre which are present in the liquid state will get removed much more easily when there is an increase in temperature and not only that we know that the whole dynamic equilibrium comes in and like the process of dissolution is actually exothermic and so because of that the number of molecules that get dissolved will decrease when there is an increase in temperature with that we're done with the solubility of a gas in a liquid in the next video we will be discussing the example problem given in your textbook followed by the index questions